That's true. So, and I guess the same thing with Quap too. It's like the same story basically. Like they realize that their draft, they kind of are lacking on control. But I mean, F Queen of Pain is going to die pretty quickly if she does get chronoed. So that's going to be a pretty key component to this game. Um, so maybe is on the razor. And not not, they... not not exactly what we were searching for, but it's still going to be uh, a good matchup. Uh, this is now going to force the Viper uh, into safe lane. So the co the Corp should be heading towards the mid up against the Razor. I'm also liking the the roaming combination of both teams, Lion as well as SK. Maybe not always the greatest initiators because uh, Lion's impel stun it's got reworked a couple of months ago. Makes it a little bit harder to hit these days. Uh, but the SK Barrow Strike at level one's never really that great. But if you get a boost first Rubik over an LGDC deck, you get a good transition into the split earth damage. And one thing which has really been a highlight over the last couple of days is the Latrak pickups down in the Chinese region. And they're maxing this lightning as early as they possibly can. And the burst damage is just crazy. Because you're going to jump in there with level 4 Fae Bolt, the lightning burst damage, and if Rubik gets lucky, he'll also be able to steal, like, be it Scream, Burrow Strike, or Impale. So you get the burst damage extra from that. It's, um, th this support combination is becoming more and more my favorite to be seen, like, drafted. Yeah, and it's really good behind Chrono, like, and Razor, if he has a mech to, like, back them up, but they're kind of squishy if they don't get, like, early items to sort of protect them, like, Urn or Casual Bracer or something like that, so if they get initiated on by, like, the Sand King or the Lion, like, Kung Fu has basically just as much burst going for them with their finger and even just the bro strike uh, and like earth spike combo and I guess scream too that can pretty much kill any hero on CDX team except for maybe the razor or the void if he gets backtracks so it's going to be a pretty like who gets the jump first is going to probably end up winning the fights all of the time like the initiation is going to be crucial both teams have a lot of damage and they're pretty squishy but we'll see if like they go s this might be a decent game for nature's profit to get like that one if they wanted to really early like if they can shut down the sand king's blink and get him like that as much as I I don't usually like say the blade mail build is that good, but this could be a game where it could be okay because they have the Chronosphere and they do have the Rubik uh, lift into Lushrak stun now to control like the heroes. They don't need they don't really need like an Orchid or something that can give them early control. But if they get the blade mail and some like make Nature Prophet a tank and then get a Mech on Razor, mm -hmm. they could actually fight like before Tong Fu is really ready to do anything. So we'll see. We'll see if like if one team goes for a really aggressive like early game item build and starts taking fights off of it and the other team fights into it there's a good chance that like the team that has the better items early is going to win obviously but <laughs> i mean are, are you not a fan of the nature's profit um build because of like what transition into the into mid game yeah pretty much i mean if you do that build and then the enemy team just ignores you and tries to like split push and doesn't fight you and they don't hit like they just don't fight into the blade mail then you're pretty screwed on the hair like he is a really good farmer but if you don't get like a maelstrom or a midas early your farming potential is so bad it's actually it takes like you just have to sit in the jungle and like auto attack creeps with your trends for a while until you can get one of those items so it if you are going to do that you still have to follow it up i think with a maelstrom or something which is pretty common but it it, it delays your like a lot of your items by a pretty yeah. significant amount yeah, I, I agree with you on that front, but at the same time, the build works in uh, at least the European scene, primarily because of just the, the timing everyone's looking for. Everyone's the pushing hard begins. early on, or they're, they're forcing fights very early on, which, which allows the build to work. Yeah, I mean, it can definitely work. And I think nope. going a Maelstrom or if he goes, <laughs> yeah, they're trying to deny the history, but... If he goes to build early on, like, and Tong Fu's showing signs of early aggression, which I think they will, I mean, it'll be okay. Because he's gonna need it to be able to fight. I mean, if he doesn't have, like, a bunch, if he doesn't have a bunch of tank items, and he just has, like, a Maelstrom or a Midas, and they start pushing really hard early, then he's gonna get punished really hard for it. I think... I think he needs to, at the very least, just go Maelstrom this game and not get the Midas, yeah. but we'll see what he does. He is starting with a Null Talisman, though, so that might be an indicator. Yeah, I got a funny feeling, man, you're looking at that build coming. <laughs> There's no way you'll be able to avoid it in this game. Um, we got this boost yeah. first Sand King. He's got Burrow Strike as well, but 
Unfortunately for, uh... Unfortunately for the SK, there's no real openings to get. Like, he wants to go on the Nature's Prophet. Rather difficult to do when Prophet summons up trees and then scouts out the side. Should also oh, like the fact that Prophet has no vision ward up here. He'll rely 100% on his trance to get the vision on that on that moving SK. While well, hello, bottom lane. Pick up, throw back down again. Just a little strike stun. Even if they don't kill him off right now, it's all a lot of damage coming into red. But then again, maybe they can. That's a lot, a lot of damage into him, and they got it. Little strike will take first blood. You wouldn't really think that a, uh, a level 1 combination of Lashrak and Rubik would be able to pick up that kill, because they had no Fate Bolt. They had no Lightning follow-up damage, but... Then again, Doom had no armor, and he had no Stout Shield. Which made that a lot easier to do. Was he just... he was trying to eat the creep, right? And his, like, history yes. right now, I missed yeah. it, yeah, he, so... He, he was basically but... trying to walk himself down this direction and pick up the creep. And then Rubik, as well as Lashrak, were doing a pull at the time. And that was just a simple telekinesis into into stun. And they both were attacking the entire time. And now they're going to go he's again. Going on Kick again, up. Yeah. Well, there's no uh, stun just yet. He's holding on to it. But at the same time, there's Edict damage coming in. The time walk's going to slow him down, which will allow the stun to hit just on the tip. And Red goes down a second time in the space of 30 seconds. And now the bottom tower yeah. can be forced because we've got an Edict first Lashrak as well. Which means you win this, and already... Okay, that was a little bit late on the stun. <laughs> he could have waited for Garda just to get the pickup. But this Doombringer is so crippled now in the off lane. Because they can just keep doing this. If he comes down, one telekinesis and he's gone. Uh, he did get some experience with that. I was about to say before he died the second time, like, the first death wasn't that big a deal because he still got the stacked wave and he was going to get farm, and then he immediately just gets dove again, so... It wasn't worth it feeding two kills, but feeding that first kill isn't the end of the world, especially since it was to the support, so... It's not like it's going to really accelerate uh, Void Swarm that much. It's just going to give them early boost, so it really... Like, their roaming potential early is way higher now because they both just got fed boots. And that's going to make them pretty scary, even for mid. And like, especially since this co-op is hovering at low HP already, but I guess he's fine. He's bringing himself his salve. And he's working his way towards bottle. Yeah, but yeah, that's not yeah. how you want to start out the game. <laughs> the, the fact you're even forced into a salve to delay your bottle. Oh, and this curry almost got sniped. Uh, they just Prophet was giving it an attempt now. Well, actually with the tree and damage, U9 is has to fall back. There's more support rotating over. Red's gonna have a crack and they just Prophet and Prophet should really try and hide inside the trees right now. Because he tries to uh, walk past the Doombringer, he won't get out of here. Doom's with the boots first and scorched earth. Support needs to rotate over if uh they just prophet's gonna survive this one. He buys up his boots, accepting death. U9 comes down as well. They're using a lot of time. Telling you just pick up from that throwback. Let's rack, not gonna use the stun, but Queen of Pain retreats out. So now we've got time wasted of the off laner as well as the mid solo. Who only just freshly picked up the bottle and spent like 30 seconds to 45 seconds out of mid. LGC Decker off to a great start because this Tong from mid and, and offlane uh, just getting crippled. Yeah, in the last hits right now, it's 25 to 10. Like, Razor has a mini deny, his pop has less hits, so. And not that that the denies are even like him being out of experience range, like you said, Clop missed like probably a wave and a half, or actually like two full waves, not even being in lane, and they get the tier one bot. So mm -hmm. this is the type of like early snowball I was talking about, where if like LGDC deck wants to, they can just get the like early. This would be a, probably a good game for the early blade mill on Niche Prophet, and just getting like a fast mech, or even if you want to, if they want to, they could go the mech on Niche Prophet and have yeah. Razor just build really tanky, go like drums. I, I, I would just, go. I would go straight into the mech right now because you're not going to get it from either of the supports from LGD, and maybe the Lashrak could build into it just because the amount of pressure they can add to the towers. But you really do forget about like that edict pressure which can come from a Lashrak. They've almost killed off this tier 2 tower now, and Faces Void has no problem sending his ground here. Because if Garda gets a pickup, then Red will die again. There's nothing much has changed with this Doombringer, apart from the fact he's got an unholy aura inside of him. Level 5 doesn't really change that much, because he's still sitting there, now with 1 armor as opposed to 0 armor as he crosses the 4-5 threshold. But beyond that, he's still a very easy pickoff. And Void will be... Well, he's approaching six, so he's a very, very easy kill once he gets his Chronosphere on Void. Um, the Sand King up top is also... I mean, he's trying to get level three, I believe, so he can go clear his stack, but... Is he still not got this it? This is not a... Huh? He's still not got it. 
No, yeah. yeah, this is not a good like sinking timing. He's really, really delayed right now in everything. I mean, typically you want to try and if you're like having a f sort of free lane, because even like Nature's Prophet, like when he rotated, Sanking was basically having a free time. Like he could do whatever he wants, and mm -hmm. all this like space being created around the map by C deck was like Sanking was basically the one that wasn't doing anything to like mitigate any of it. So he needed to be really like farming a lot during that time, and he has not been. I mean, I would be surprised if he has his blink by 10 minutes at this rate. Yeah, and that's a pretty. Typically, like eight to nine minutes is a pretty good timing, especially if you're sort of doing stuff around the map. So if you're like helping people, and then you stack, and then you help people, and you stack. This but game's this coming game is, in the middle lane yeah. from both sides, oh. in fact, as uh, Queen of Pain's going to blink herself down. Garda walking in range of the tower, gives a lot of damage to Plaza Field as she kills up the SK. That wasn't even intentional, but either way, U9 Scream's going to come out. He's trapped inside the trees. More support did arrive for Tongfu, and with the Viper Strike, Prophet will go down. And Tongfu finally getting an advantage during these engagements. But they bring their entire squad in order to win that engagement. But the poor SK, he borrows Drag Din, and the plants of field was like, oh, okay, we'll just try and zone out Tomfu, but it took so much of the life of SK. That's just a simple follow-up kill. I wasn't quite sure, though, about the approach angle of LGDC deck, uh, with Rubik running directly past the tower. Dyer's bottom tower is yeah, under I, I think they were hoping to, like, they just sort of panicked because they didn't expect that game. The Doom's over on Faces Void. Let's oh, rack with nice. a double stun. Edict damage as well is going to make it very difficult for Carbo and Ray to follow. So the Doom was going to get blown to start with. But at least they didn't get Chrono, because if that happened, then they would probably be dead right now. Yeah, they're going to get the tower tonight out of that. But it's still Doom down early, which, like... That allows Void to farm very, very aggressively because there's basically no way he's going to die now. I mean, with that being on cooldown. So he can just sit like as far up as he wants to in lane. As long as he has a TP scroll and time lock up, he's not going to die. Are we, or should we be looking for like LGD to switch up now? Like you've got, you've got a Lothraku who's just itching to bring down towers, but you probably have the support of someone like the Faceless Void. So would you move them up towards the top lane with the Rubik and try and force other lanes? Or T1 tower in the middle lane, probably gonna be the easier target. I think they just want to look for pickoffs and then go for towers off of that, which... Is this Rubik warding? I think he's trying to get, like, aggressive wards up so they can get these pickoffs, but... Um... It's gonna be... They should do something. I don't think they should let this Sand King get back in the game like he is right now. Like, they could smoke the jungle, maybe, with the Lushrak and this, uh... Rubik, and then have Nature Prophet TPN and try and pick him off while he's doing his stacks or something like that, and then take the Mitar off of it. But I don't think they want to just, like, static their supports in a lane. If they do, it is probably... Because they can still have Nature Prophet do this. He just TPs up and gets the waves when they're there. But it's dangerous for anyone on their team to, like, really push out past, you know... Like, right here. So he can just come and take the experience when necessary, and the supports can sort of stay off the map and apply pressure that way. I really think that it would be good if they could gank this sinking though, while he's doing these stacks, because he is actually starting to get farmed now. Like, they've been just focusing 100% on him. If he gets a blink, it's going to make every hero in LGDC be, like, significantly more afraid of farming. Well, we've got uh, LGDC deck now moving up. It's going to be uh, the Viper just being forced back past the tier 1 tower. But the rest of the boys now moving over. Three heroes. Void jumps in. He's looking for the Chrono, and he'll be able to pick up the Viper. He moves up to Kabu, however, running out of the Chrono. It's like they wanted the Lion dead first, then attempted TP out for the Forest right, catching two heroes, then the Doom in full track. That looked a little bit of a mess right there from... Uh, from LGDC deck. That looked like a... Actually, uh, sorry, that's an that's a understatement. That was a big mess. Yep, that is how you throw a huge advantage. I mean, they're not obviously really in bad shape by any means, but that was pretty, like, significant overextension by the Void. I mean, it kind of looked like a good fight. He's like, I have Chronosphere, and I think a lot of times Void's early game feel like they're too strong when they have that ability up. And he just, like, he was way too far behind the tower. He shouldn't have jumped the Viper like that because he didn't have any damage to follow up. I mean, Void early does basically no damage in his own Chrono, especially with that item build. So, I... It was just kind of a... That's why I would have liked to see them go for someone in the jungle because they won't really anticipate that as much. I think the Viper was actually kind of ready for that game. Close. Oh, now okay. Viper's getting a lot more money into him. Now this is really problematic for LGDC there because he's getting a lot harder to kill off. And once that mech is up, then Tom is gonna have a lot better team fight. And in the meantime, you've got a faceless Void who still needs more time to farm up. At least his hand of Myers will skyrocket him up too, but... 
Needs to find a little bit more damage now he's dealing with a little bit more tanky uh, heroes. That's, okay, so we have we have a uh, 11 minute. He buys smoke already in preparation. But after he's finished this stack, uh, LPC will be walking around with that blink dagger. Yep. And I mean, that's not a bad timing by any means, but it just would have been nice if he could have gone early because he wasn't really doing too much. He was just sort of farming the whole time. If you're doing other things besides just farming, then it's a pretty good timing regardless. But he was actually just like farming the lane. He pulled and stayed in lane until he got three and was just stacking. And I think they did do a sentry ward early, though, that kind of screwed him up a little bit, but still. But regardless, he has it now. And like this fight right here should be, this is pretty significant. They should try and get the mana on Doom so they can like just do a blink Doom on someone and kill them. They need to get a kill with this blink dagger though. Before showing it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And we'll see where they go. Uh, let's see, so right now, you just, like, as the Sand King, you need to go and anticipate where the other person's gonna be. They could go for the Razor mid, but he has a mech, so if they don't use Doom on that, there's no way they're killing that target. I mean, he just got his power cards too, so he's got a 15 charge one, a mech, and a... Uh, boots. I would really like to see them just go for the Nature's Prophet because they know he's been like hanging out up here and then push off of it. But Are you gonna we'll see, see where they go. You'll see Doom as well as SK go together. So you will have that Doom. So maybe they do have a crack at maybe. But at the same time, I'm saying LGDC deck move up towards the north. They've got the Corona back off cooldown and I'm fairly certain they want kill to tower. That's gonna be their goal right now. Well, the yeah. Abyss room from the Queen of Pain. Uh, she's triggered it, so I think she can just have some bottle charges available. But if she screams this wave, whoever can reveal gets herself, they come up. Observer Ward, it won't scout him out, because obviously being smoked up. But the Void's pretty damn close to him, and now... Oh, there They'll goes, you. There goes your now. SK. They can see him on the side. Void jumps in, Chrono. He has... Oh, oh no! He does actually have the SK. He's going to channel the Epicenter. Oh, and then he got time lock halfway through the Epicenter. The Doom will be cracked. He'll borrow a strike out of this one with a sand on a big Sonic Wave. Garda's low on life. The Viper Strike is coming up. Garda cannot run away. The Viper will end up getting the kill on that one. And the Eye of the Storm from maybe. Stealing some nice damage, but... Haystrom will allow him to, well, potentially escape. He's coming back into this engagement. I don't think he's got enough life points to really survive this. Not when Queen of Pain comes in with a scream. She had the sting as well, but no, won't be triggering it. Or so maybe, well, he's got more support coming back in again. Already triggering the bottle charges, but they can't find a kill just yet, especially when Lashrak misses the stun. And Prophet, you are not TPing in there. <laughs> yeah, that was good by... Uh... U9 to not blink there because if he would have blinked aggressively he probably would have gotten the kill but if there was anyone there to back him up he would have died which there were people there so that's just a def more defensive play a sand king he actually was set up for such a good play i think channeling ultimate there was a little questionable especially with the void bashing on or hitting you because even if he like doesn't get stunned if he gets a lucky bash you're gonna be screwed but he just sort of rolled the dice, and he was, I think he didn't think he was going to get stunned by anyone. So he's just like, I hope he doesn't bash me while I'm channeling this. and Because he would have soloed the Void if he did that. But yeah, that was pretty crazy how much he like just barely missed that chrono. He saw the sinking, so he knew he was like down there. It's not like he just like was hiding or anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that was a pretty crazy team fight. Well, 6-8 to eight now on the board. How are we looking overall? 1,000 net worth, uh, advantage here in the way of LGDC deck. So they have lost from their initial around 4k advance that they had. <laughs> and the experience gain is now also kicking in for Tongfu. So they're looking a lot better. Especially when that Queen of Pain is going to have her Orchid up and running. The Blink Dagger on the SK, the Mech on the Viper, the Drums on the Doom. All these, all these different things are working out nicely for them. And as far as items go, Prophet, well, he's, he's getting closer and closer to finishing that Blade Mount, which he will finish. Uh, and there's 1,400 gold over on this Faceless Void. No Mask of Madness just yet. And very prominently TPs himself to that top lane. Did it while the Catapult was still in range. So Tom Ford are going to know there's another fight coming from LGDC deck on the top lane. They were doing this, like, full commit to early game. Well, okay, Void has a Midas, so not really, but he's going Midas into Ag, so he's not going to have very much damage. Like... Which, I don't know how I feel about that, because their heroes really don't have that much damage outside of, like, their, their few nukes. I mean, Razor can right-click if he gets a, a good, like, uh, whatever, static link off, but mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that against, like, a Viper. I mean, the last fight he had a haste rune, so obviously it was easier, but <laughs> he's not always going to be able to just run into the middle of the whole team and just, like, run around and do whatever he wants. Maybe once he gets his BKB, but... Even then, they still have Viper Strike, so they can kite him around when he's BKB'd. Yeah. Unless if he gets his BKB off. 
as you were saying before, it's all about the initiation. If SK can get that initial stun before he gets the BKB up, then the Lion can follow up with both Finger, stuns, his hexes. But there's a lot of options for Tongfu to still nail down these cores of LGDC deck. I can't I mean, believe we're really saying that after the start. Yeah, the we ended up having. it looks so bad. I and mean, like that's why you just never want to give up, though. I mean, you could be really in a bad spot, but the other team could do something kind of dumb, like do that chrono mid and just overextend a little bit. And if everyone's like there at the right time, you can get a really good fight, and it just turns around. Because I, I mean, Tongfu has a really good chance going into this late game. I mean, Nature's Prophet is going for that blade mail build, which will be yeah, really strong when he, like right when he gets it. But his farm is going to be significantly weakened. His like farming potential. And even with that blade mill, like he's still a pretty easy kill. Once uh when Queen of Fang gets her uh Orchid or if Doom goes blink, which I'm pretty sure he is, I mean either of those two heroes can kill him without support almost. And if Lion or Sand King are there or Viper are there, it's a like guaranteed kill. So I think it's gonna be pretty hard for him to really do anything like farming wise. And, like after he gets his blade mill, unless they win a lot of fights off of it, so he's gonna need to win fights with his blade mill, and then buy like a maelstrom or something that'll allow him to farm. But it looks like the yeah, Tomfi wants to push it right now. Fire strike gonna go. On. Oh, do they just prop a fire strike? Now gonna be storm, which will pull him out of the sandstorm. And with a little track follow us on the SK will drop. Faces voice leap up Chrono. He can go on the Doombringer, and he will do so. Static link as well as I of the storm to make sure he's gonna go down one. It's prop a little bit far behind, but then again, the blade mail damage seems to have done some extra chip work for the LGC deck. So while the prophet might die. He'll get a big advantage from this one because the Viper will also drop. And the eating damage means it flicking towards the tier 1 tower. And Tonka with three heroes down. Means that they can just be forced down the middle lane. Tier 1 and tier 2 tower if they want to. Uh, they do still have Blink up here in game, so I'll be surprised if they get the tier 2, but... Yeah, it's still, it's a great fight, and I mean, <laughs> they got the tier 1, a bunch of kills off of it. I don't really know why Tongfu wanted to push mid there. It looks like they were hoping to just get like one or two people pick off, and then take the tower off of it, but all of LGDC deck was there and waiting, and the fight just went horrible for them. The Sand King was way too far, it was the same sort of situation, basically, LGDC deck did it early, with the Void just going way too far ahead of his teammates, and the Sand King was, like, there was really no one that could follow up on the Sand King stun there, even if it looked like a good stun. So and, and Initially, I don't think he even meant to really be there. It was up next to the Ancient area, looking uh, smoked up, just looking like to do an epicenter jump in. That's all they really wanted, but never really found the opening. So came to check what was behind him, walked down the ramp, revealed himself, and then set, thought, oh crap, I've revealed myself, I better do something now. So it was Burrow Strike into Sandstorm, but he gave out the Burrow Strike, which means instantly pulled back out of the Sandstorm. And maybe he did actually have that confidence. Well, uh, no, there's still a Shrike l l like split up that would pull him out of Sandstorm. Yeah. Because there really are only three abilities over an LGDC deck which can stop him from doing that. I mean, if they have detection too, it's really... You don't want to rely on that until you have, like, something to get you out of it. I mean, if you can just burst... I mean, uh... It's just really risky. It's better off to, when you're at this phase of the game is the coming down. Really just to Maybe controls. might have to trigger it. This BKB oh. early, and now the Doom will go. The finger of death. They're really trying to kill off. Maybe at the same time that SK being completely controlled on a perfect Chronosphere. Carbu and Red, wrong place for them at the wrong time. There goes your blade well damage, but it's not enough to keep him alive. But the strike it again. Did perfectly. The big shots from Maybe with the plasma field damage. Tofu is going to lose absolutely everybody. Three for the price of five. There's the trade-off in favor of LGDC deck. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That was just a pretty crazy initiation from them. They keep trying to blow people up and like do these dives without really having any follow-up damage. And I mean, that was a really kind of good initiation for them too. I mean, that, he got that crazy blink stun on both behind Dyer's the trees, but then immediately attack. died afterwards. And they weren't like they doomed the razor weren't able to kill him, but it stopped him from getting his like BKB off. So they, I don't really know. I don't know who, how they were planning on like killing people there. They just sort of went on them, but they didn't really focus one target. It's like let's just kill, 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 kill the ball. Yeah, and that happens a lot. I mean, sometimes you see a gun chain, you're like, we want to fight, let's go on them, and no one really focuses the same target. You split your damage on everyone, and they just mech, and you're like, okay, <laughs> well, we got them, but we didn't do anything, so. You can run into that a lot. That's a pretty big miscommunication problem with some team. Well, it's gonna hurt them, man, because that's now shifting up the net worth advantage to almost 7.5k and increasing. And the 4,000 experience gain has now been uh, achieved.
considering it was a 3k lead for Tongfu. The swing be high. Not to mention Faces Voice Farm be high yeah, as well. He's almost got nags. Like he's about to get it right here. Yeah, with just this last hit if he didn't fail it. Um <laughs> no. Sorry, well, that's man. That's bad timing for him. We'll check what we can see. on the run right now. He'll have to hex up Nate to drop it very quick. Misses the stun, however. But it did hold Garter away from him. Nice. While on the bottom lane, it looks like Faces Void did actually go down. Do you at least oh, buy I didn't up even his. get it. No. Add in some of those assets can happen, man. man. Well, maybe he's at least having a crack at the Viper. He'll need a little bit of help if he's going to get that kill. Still yeah, he won't need damage, actually, yeah, for this tower, because now they can just destroy it with Edict plus his whip damage. Well, the tier one's down the bottom lane, slowing down, because the fortification is stopping him. There's uh, double TPs on the way in. Or, yeah, there it is. They just drop it. They get the jump on the SK. The tower does go the way of the dire side. The plasma field picks up the Sand King as well as the Doombringer and reveal the fact the Queen of Pain jumped to the tree line. But she's so deep now, they can't stop her. But that removes Those almost really all the other towers of is, Yeah. And so they just have the top one left. And that's just Leshrac. I mean, so the first one went down because there was two deaths on Doom. The first one Ooh, was fine run. because he could have pulled the creep wave away. But then again, they did a good job. Like, LGDC deck really did not let him do that. And then we saw the power of Leshrac early game. If he gets those early levels from the kills, he just had two points in Edict. And they got, the t like, the second tower to, like, 70% HP, which is... A level three push, which is pretty crazy. I don't think there's too many heroes besides Leshrac that could actually like put pressure on a tier two at level three, like at what like three or four minutes into the game. So that was like what snowballed their tower pushing advantage. And then and then like Tongfu just took some bad fights and gave up the rest of their towers basically. Well, it's like LGDC deck again, try and force an issue. They drop a sentry ward, so they know they're not being. They watched. do have vision on Quap right now too. Mm-hmm. If they, if they can just get like one or two pick offs here, then the tier two tower on the top lane belongs to them. Because Tongfu won't have power to repel them. But they need the pick offs. Whoa, well, hey. well, okay, Void. Uh, leaves himself in range of the dire base, has the smoke break. So they must just be gonna force the top lane normally. You got a nature's prophet already pushing it out, so the creep wave will reach the tower. Yeah. Off lane as well. Uh, looks like uh, a little bit of counter push coming up from uh, Doombringer as well as the Sand King. But, but they both have to TP back. Like, looks like they are going to properly defend this tier 2 tower. But the second they do, like Garda is winning with a Blink Dagger and Four Staff and Sandstorm. So he's going to try and be the perfect counter initiator into the Tongfu lineup. Now the tower's being picked away. The heroes are still smoked up. Kabu can be revealed. And they throw down their own observed ward. This does scan out Garda over from the side, which means a blink to Boris strike. He should have seen that happening. And the finger of death will bring him down. The Chrono, he'll be committed. And he got the Doombringer. The Corp almost walked into that. The Viper actually did walk into that. And the stun fall up into the Doombringer. He'll get his ulti up. And over on the BK beat up Razor, who's already tricked off all of his abilities, giving him a double kill now. Three heroes down for Tolmfu, two down for LGDC deck. And the Nature's Prophet still trying to battle up against the Viper. Lashrike won't get there in time to get a stun off. So both Viper and Quap will fall back. But the top tier 2 tower was also lost for Tongfu. And that was with them getting, like, uh, an initiation. It, they, it just it was unfortunate they weren't unable to get away from that Void Jump right there because that would have been a really good pick for them if they wouldn't have all died for it. But they just sort of weren't able to get away. That's the problem about sinking is he really has to like commit on every pickoff and he doesn't have really any escape mechanism on his own until he gets like a four staff. And sinking actually isn't even going for it, he's just going I'm assuming that's a BKB. I'd assume as well, but I don't understand why he go BKB in this game. Those are kinda of weird items actually. He doesn't have, like he doesn't even have that much mana really. <laughs> he just he got the casual null talisman, he doesn't have magic stick. I mean obviously arcane boots is very common, but it, you can skip it if you do like the null talisman and usually you still need a magic stick though in order to have enough mana to like use all your spells reliably. Huh. Just seems really unusual. Uh, moving on bottom lane, Garda wants to make a jump. He had to wait until uh, SK revealed himself. They had to sprout into the tree line to see him. Well, they summon the trees. He goes deeper. Oh boy. And there's the plasma field vision. They don't have they a have way though to, to actually break and free that until the track moves in. And then the bar is strike down run. deeper. The I mean, sprout this reveal is pick up, throw it down, chase him all the way to the trees. It is not safe to be here. They went so deep to get that. I think that wasn't like that bad. They did give he did give away Burrow Strike to Rubik though, which is kinda bad. 
You don't want to be doing that when he has a blink and a force, because he's basically like a better version of Sand King right now. <laughs> That's how Rubik rolls, I guess. He likes to take people's spells and become better versions of them. But I mean, Chongfu was able to farm the map during that, and his four heroes committed to just killing one, so... And he wasted a lot of their time. But, I mean, they're already so ahead that LGDC can do stuff like that and not really lose that much. A lot of TP's coming up to the top lane, maybe. Here to defend the Doom, as well as uh, Queen of Pain TPing themselves, uh, blinking themselves out. Furion's going in. Uh, he's going to spread over on Red, and Red's got no way to get out of this one. They need a stun or something. Boy, oh, whoa, whoa. That Chrono still wasn't even in range. It was close, turn. yeah. That's he was just edge. trying to rush it. Which, I mean, he has an Ag, so it actually is kind of worth making risks like that. If he didn't have an Ag, I wouldn't do something like that, but... It, it's worth it for the kill because if they get that kill there, they can actually pressure the base. Because without Doom, like without Doom up, I mean they're not going to be able to take a fight very well because that Razor is like just he has a mech, he can BKB, he can just run in and do so much damage just spamming plasma field and static linking someone. Because even though in the last fight Doom used his Doom on Razor after he BKB, like uh, he still can't mech after that and he can't static link, so it does make a difference. But yeah. Well, for now, man, it looks like, uh, well, Prop is doing the, the split push kind of thing with his level 3 Necro books. They're going to look to come high ground. The rest of LGD is, is ready to push in the mid, but the Prop is trying to get the off lane. Doom Ring is pretty Why close to him, but he's got no controlling and really abilities on him at the moment. And you still got Garda. Like, I, I just wanted to see what would happen with Garda if he stayed alive on that top fight. Because with a Blink Dagger and Force Staff, the Rubik could just dictate the terms of this fight. Makes so much space for the Void as well as the Razor. And looks like LGD today, they're just gonna go for... Shit, they're going for Roshan, with only one Observer Ward outside. They have no vision, the trees are all staying inside the pit as well. They're doing this completely blind, and Tolfu's got a lot of jump heroes into that pit. But they're not coming anywhere near him. <laughs> Yeah, that's just a really dangerous fight for them at this point. I mean, if the Sand King pulls off like a really good epicenter bro strike, he can they can take that fight. But he wasn't really in a good position to do it. And even though there's only one Observer Ward up, it was in a spot where if the Sand King tried to go on them, they would have saw him coming, and he definitely would have gotten like stopped by the Rubik. So it's just. At this phase of the game, Tongfu is better off trying to just sort of avoid fights as much as possible. Go for pickoffs. Oh, mid lane. Yeah. Razor just walks point blank up to a nice double barrow strike. That. And then maybe. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just like, nice double barrow strike. It's like, no, no, that barrow strike was actually the Rubik's. Queen of Pain is most definitely oh, dead. And run. Mm, well, uh, what I was saying before they got picked off right there is they need to not get picked off and just try and split push out lanes as much as possible and make their own pickoffs and avoid fighting and try and get back into the game that way, but LGDC deck knows how to deal with that. They take the Roshan and they just go force fights. Go the chrono. They found red and now, well, there's your epithet. A lot of damage coming into Garda with the plasma field damage also arrives. And well, LPC's on the run out here. Kabu traps up the trees to make charge of the vibe and keeping alive a little bit longer. But not really long enough as the SK does die in the trees. The tomb is over on Lance's Prophet. But even Prophet is going to be able to tank this up. Yep. And the Razor's That's the nice thing about this build. Is that he can't survive Dooms. Hmm. Yeah, TP back to base and then rejoin his teammates back in the mid. Because they're getting ready to fight again. Chrono, it sure is on cooldown for 24 more seconds. But they got Nagus the Immortal on, on this Razor with an Agon Scepter upgrade. They want to burn through the buildings and put this game beyond contention. And while the face is void, Orchid's going to go on him. Still no Chrono just yet. They're ticking him down, but the Backstrike is actually saving him from a little bit of that damage. The melee rank is already toast. Necrium is doing their work. Red actually copying some damage from that too. As he goes for the Devourer, and maybe, well, there's a big slow on the red. There's Void, gets a double chrono. He did catch out the Razor, however, in the middle of all of that. So uh, he's not going anywhere, but the Pyro Strikes, looking for the kill on the Dacious Prophet, able to achieve it. Then maybe LGDC deck should be looking to back up. Maybe it's TPing out Kabu, standing over on the face of Void, allowing the Razor to escape, while the Blink Pyro Strike catching out two heroes. What a gutter steal. Barra strikes, we can try and get further away, away from Red. Lion actually ends up going down with Nature's proper Street as well as Wrath of Nature. He bought back so he was able to do that. And they don't pick up any of the uh, other retreating LGD, LGD heroes. 
That might have been game over right there if the Void would have just had a, been like a little bit closer so he could have, you know, chronoed the Razor, and, or not chronoed the Razor, so the Razor could have auto-attacked while they were in the chrono. But either way, I mean, at this point, being down a Rax against a Nature's Prophet, even if he isn't like a really heavy Swiftwish farm build, and then like the threat of an Ag's chrono, I mean, he can just gank so much right now. It's going to be really hard for Tongfu to do anything. They they really needed to just like I don't know they were basically given this game they were they were at a point at the early game like you said where we both believed they were pretty much done already <laughs> yeah we were it was like well we'll just wait and sort of see what happens and LGDC deck's gonna win this eventually but mm -hmm. they were sort of given the game back like they had a few, really oh, few oh, like opportunities to farm up their core items and take fights but they just sort of took really awkward fights for no reason. Other than the fact that they, they were just trying to go for ganks. Like, honestly, this is what happened to us in the recent games we played, is they go for these fights that are kind of unnecessary, just because they're like, maybe they felt that LGDC deck has a better licking than them, which I would say marginally they do, but it's not so significant that, um, yeah, Chrono on two, and basically they're just going to clean up the game. <laughs> yeah, this is sort of, you don't even to say anything, you just, they're going to run them over because they have 20,000 more gold than them. Um, no, but, no, yeah. Normally I'd interrupt for, for fights like this, but it doesn't yeah. really matter. <laughs> and you, you knew it was just going to get a pick up. When you see a refresher off over on the Razor, like a double eye of the storm, it's an easy chrono. And the rest of the team of LGDC deck were moving perfectly into the base. Yeah. It was, it was over. <laughs> well, yeah, like I was saying, they almost gave them the game back and they just sort of took fights for no reason because they felt that LGDC deck maybe had better late game than them and the fights ended up going really, really badly and all of a sudden their late game becomes un like manageable. So, yeah, that wraps up.